Hi, welcome to Trapping Inc. I'm Rich Mellon. I've got my guest here today, AJ Callenbach. Say hi to everybody, AJ. Howdy. We are setting up link snares. AJ's had great success with this cubby system that, that he uh, uses, and we're going to set a whole whack of them over here in the next few days. We are, this is what, number three today? This is number three, yeah. This is number three, and it's only going to get faster and faster, he says, so uh, stick around. You're going to enjoy this one. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the link snare itself. This snare here is 1 16th inch cable and it's in the 7x7 configuration. Um, that's my personal preference. Some guys like the 1x19. There's different advantages to both. The most important thing with the snare, regardless of what size of cable or um, configuration of the cable you're using, you got to make sure that snare fires quickly. You can see, you just touch that snare drops right down real quick. That's the most important part with your snare. The faster that snare drops, the higher up on the neck you're going to catch that animal. So this snare here, a couple of the other components it's got on it, it's got a lock. This is called cam lock and this is what they call a modified cam lock. You can see it's got teeth filed into it. That's a very very good idea. All of your cam locks if you're using these should be filed. Those teeth just help grip that cable a little bit better. You can see you can pull on that it doesn't come back. It slides very easily and the tighter it gets it locks in there and those teeth will just help add uh, more locking power to that lock. As well, the snare has got what's called a snare collar support on it. Uh, they come in many different uh, makes and different things like that. This one is just a piece of gas line. There's other ones made of metal. They all work. Uh, the main function of this is to help support your snare. You use a piece of number nine wire, stick it into this snare collar support, and using that you can bend that number nine wire around and hold your snare wherever you need it to be. Uh, it's very, very important you have this on your snares. It takes a lot of the work out of it trying to get your snare positioned properly and uh, it'll make your setting a lot faster and it'll give you a lot more humane kills because your snare will be able to be positioned properly and as well, this number nine wire, because it's uh, jammed in there, prevents all this extra wire here from uh, interfering with the firing of that snare. All you're dealing with at that point because it's locked into that snare collar support is just the cable that's in the loop. So as soon as that animal touches, it's going to drop right now and you're going to get a real good high humane catch. Trapping is the cornerstone that Canada was built on. Brave and sometimes crazy men and women, fueled by the lucrative fur trade, explored and mapped our great nation. Hundreds of years have passed since then, but trapping still remains vibrant, strong, and steeped in the ancient traditions. The fur bearers still follow the old paths and live as dictated by thousands of years of instinct. Fur only gets prime in the harsh temperatures of winter and trappers must respect and prepare for the weather. Trapping's past is firmly rooted in history, but today, the gear and techniques have changed. Canada is still known for the best wild fur in the world, and today our pelts are sold on the global market. Our community is large, and our numbers are growing. We are trappers. This is what we do and where we belong. Join us in our adventures. Welcome to Trapping Inc., the face of today's trapper. Okay, so when I'm looking for to build a cubby, there's a couple things to look for. Obviously, sign there's links around. And then even where you build the cubby, I always try to find a tree like this one here. You can see there's lots of overhanging branches. Gonna keep a lot of that snow off the cubby. Um, I see some guys build a cubby and they put a roof on it to try and keep the snow out. It's way easier to just find a tree that's got lots of branches that'll do the work for you. Cuts down a lot of the time on trying to build these things. Um, as well, when I'm building the cubby, I wanna try and find a tree it's got lots of dead branches around it. When you're building cubbies, you don't want to build them out of green branches. 
Uh, what happens, you'll get your cubby, it'll be built all nice. You'll come there the next day, all those green branches will sag, and your cubby will be about this tall, and look just like a caved in mess. If you build it out of these dead branches, it'll all be there, and it'll stay just the way you built it. So those are some of the things I'm looking for when I build a cubby. Uh, as well, I want it so it's nice and easy for that lynx to get to it. I don't want to have him having to try to walk through this kind of stuff. I want to make sure it's nice and easy. Uh, a lot of times I'll just kick the snow out of the way, like this on the way there. Make a nice path for him all the way from the cut line to where my cubby is, right? Um, lynx are kind of funny sometimes, like they're very curious, but at the same time, Sometimes they'll just sit there and take a look at something. They won't really get up close. You want to make sure there's nothing in the way that's going to make that lynx question whether or not he should come up to your set. Okay. Um, all these branches like this is exactly what I want when I'm building a cubby. It makes building it really quick and easy. Don't need any of those great big three inch diameter logs like some guys use takes up too much time and effort. Yeah. Oh. You can see, just a matter of sticking these into the ground real quick to make up the pen. Again, you want to make sure this pen is big enough in diameter so when the lynx comes up to it, he's not going to get claustrophobic. It's big enough he can walk into it, turn around, walk out, and uh, not have to try and back up or do anything like that. You want to make it real nice and inviting for him. Canada has a long tradition of producing the finest fur in the world. At Belisle Traps, we have been a proud supporter of this reputation for over 20 years. Our patented designs and proven reliability have set the gold standard in professional grade traps. We are proud of our contributions to the advancement of trapping. Our belief in uncompromising quality means that every Belisle Trap is 100% Canadian made by us for unbeaten performance. Belisle Traps, first in the forest. This segment brought to you by Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. Online at ArgoUTV.com. Well, I've got this built. My lovely assistant Richard has gone and cut me a drug pull. <laughs> I'm a lovely assistant now. Yeah. I shouldn't have shaved this morning, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, I didn't. <laughs> what happens in the bush stays in the bush. So, with the drag pole, you want to make sure it's big enough that uh, you can tie it up to one of the branches up top. You also want to make sure it's big enough that it's not just going to break if something starts fighting on it. Um, I like making them fairly tall, fairly long. Um, that way, if you catch that lynx, you know that's going to be solid anchor point, which is really important with snares. You need that solid anchor point. You want it, uh, this is, I call it a drag pole, but it's technically, it's just an anchor point for me. Uh, you don't want to attach your snare to an actual drag where he's going to run off dragging that thing behind him. You want a good solid anchor. So when he pulls on that snare, the only thing that can give is that snare getting tighter around his neck. So. Here we've got our bait stick. It, it's, this is about what you want, inch, uh, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, inch diameter stick. It's really nice and smooth. We've got their bait on the end of it there. Right? Just a curiosity lure. This stuff is, uh, I think this is what is it, rotten livers, and there's some uh, lynx guts in there. There's a bunch of bacon grease, right? and uh, it just smells lovely. So that's what I use. Uh, you avoid a lot of bycatches. Like, you're not going to get birds going in your set like you would if you're going and using something like a beaver, a uh, piece of beaver meat for bait or something like that. You're not going to have any birds or mice or squirrels or anything bug your stuff. This here, pretty much the only thing that's going to be interested in that is the lynx. Okay, so when I'm attaching this snare to the drag pole, 
First thing I'm gonna do is take this, wrap the snare, and run it through the loop on the end of the snare. That way, it's nice and solidly attached. Next, take the number nine wire. I'm gonna run that through the loop here, you can see at the end, then wrap that around the tree as well. And that does two things. One, it'll anchor our, our snare attached to that tree even better, so there's no way it's gonna come off of this drag pole. And as well, then it allows us to use that to help support our snare so we can position it where we need it to be. So let's give that a good, real good twist. You wanna make sure that number nine wire is really good and solid. There's no point, point having a support wire if it's not gonna actually be able to support the snare. So the next step, I make my loop. And my loop, I want it to be about eight inches or more or less, something like that, about eight inches in diameter. Right? So I do that, I run the collar support over top of that wire. And then I just give this just a little bit of a kink, just enough that it holds there stiff so it doesn't fall off. What that does, it'll help pinch the cable, it'll keep that cable uh, right tight where I want it. And you can see there I've got my snare. If I need to move it, I just bend that support wire around, right, up, down, wherever I need it to be. That support wire will hold it exactly where I want it. And again, that Lynx just touches it, and you can see it drops down immediately. That's exactly what we want. So we'll just position that. So when that Lynx... Is yeah. He's not necessarily going to walk into there, but you want no. him to shove his head in and it to fall on his head, correct? Exactly, right? All I need that Lynx to do is commit that one half a step into this cubby. He doesn't have to go into there. All he has to do is just push on that just enough, right? He's not even in the cubby at that point, and I've already got him, right? At this point, as soon as he backs up, this is gonna catch that big ruff of fur around their neck, and it's gonna pull that up tight. He's gonna give this a real good jerk, get that real tight, and uh, we should have a lynx waiting for us when we get there. So. This is also a really important step. Um, with this system, if you're going to use this type of pole as opposed to anchoring it just to a tree, is you want to make sure you take this snare or this wire here and tie it around a real good solid branch and then run it down to that pole. And it's a good idea to wrap around that pole twice because then the wires will get tighter as you pull as opposed to just wrapping around once and it can become loose. This the more that wire gets pulled on, the tighter it'll grip that tree. And that way, it's, this isn't gonna go anywhere. So, uh, ideally, the Lynx, when he gets caught, he's gonna get, go in, get caught, he'll pull on this. This is just loosely in there. He'll pull this out of the way, and he'll do most of his fighting over here. So all we have to do is cut the snare off, put a new one on, take the pole, put it back in the ground, and we don't even have to rebuild the cubby. It's all sitting there waiting for us, perfect. This segment brought to you by Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. Online at ArgoUTV.com. Canada has a long tradition of producing the finest fur in the world. At Belial Traps, we have been a proud supporter of this reputation for over 20 years. Our patented designs and proven reliability have set the gold standard in professional grade traps. We are proud of our contributions to the advancement of trapping. Our belief in uncompromising quality means that every Belial Trap is 100% Canadian made by us for unbeaten performance. Belial Traps, first in the forest. This segment brought to you by Belial Traps. First in the forest. Find us online at belialtrap.com. So, this is a very important part as well, right here. This is, we're making ourselves the V. Okay. And this is what's going to help guide that links right into our snare. So, take a bunch of smooth sticks like this and uh, put them in kind of a V shape right underneath the snare. And what that does, when the Lynx looks at this snare now, he looks at this cubby, it's all a bunch of mess of pokey sticks. Then all of a sudden there's this part here, there's a bunch of smooth sticks. There's this nice V, there's an opening right there. It's the most inviting place for him to put his, uh, himself to go into this cubby. What the V does is two things. One, it provides that opening, so it's more inviting. 
and as well it provides him a place to put his feet because when a lynx walks they put their feet right in front of one another like this so when that lynx approaches the snare his foot's going to go right here and his head will follow right into that snare so um, as opposed to trying to use guide sticks and things like this just putting that v is very very quick and if you can keep the lynx's feet right here you know his head's gonna be right over top of his feet this also allows us to put that snare a little bit higher right you don't want to put it down low because what's going to happen potentially you're going to get a lynx to step into that snare keeping it up high keeps his feet totally clear of it and uh, you'll get those good neck checkers, catches just about every single time the other important thing to remember is that when the lynx looks right through that snare he's on the same level as your attractor or bait over there and he looks straight at it and goes in yep. there you go Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh, perfect, man. Perfect, nice net catch right there. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that, hardly even disturbed the sight. Just went around there once, barely even pulled this thing out of the ground. Right. Yeah, that's perfect. Look, the rest of the cubby ain't even wrecked, like he didn't fight at all. It's a small cat. Yeah, it's not a huge cat at all. It's but, not a uh, kitten. No. But it is, it, it's, it's an adult. I'd, Maybe dream it was a female. Can you tell? <laughs> it's uh, very difficult. I would, without skinning, it's almost impossible. I would say this is probably a female, but yeah. really, with the lynx, you got to skin them. Most of their hardware is inside. So I know, and, and you know what? For me, I I, I, I was just going by the size of what I caught. My females last year averaged, uh, you know, fourteen to eighteen pounds. Yeah. And uh, my males right up to twenty-eight pounds. Yeah. Now people believe, you know, that is what it. A 13 pound animal maybe maybe yeah yeah people say no way it, that that's possible oh yeah well, so take a look at this tell me like clarity and all that i mean you at the ata yeah. you you work in that uh that fur shipping all the time yeah it's, what are you looking for in a cat with a cat uh the color is a lot of it this one's fairly brown um uh, which isn't the best it's still a nice cat for sure it's very well furred um what they're looking for in the cats is more of the silver or the blue kind of color this one is fairly brown which is not bad but um, the belly it's really hard just until you get them skinned but you can see what they're looking for is all these spots and the ideal belly is one especially when you get those real silver links they got a really white belly with really defined spots that's the most desirable okay so okay. we're probably looking at here for clarity a, a, a two or a three I would say probably a two because you still got some pretty nice spots and it's not too badly off um, I've seen them way browner than this one here so this is not a bad lynx at all. Um, yeah, very, very nicely furred. Right, there's no rubbing marks or anything like that. Um, so one of the yeah. questions that we're going to get, and yep. I'm just gonna come around the other side here so you can show me something. Okay. Um, people talk, people looking at this, I'm sure watching this show have already commented that, look how high he, he sets his snares. Stand that cat up and explain yep. what's going through that cat's mind as it comes through there. I'm trying to get the snare off of him first. This segment brought to you by Belial Traps, first in the forest. Find us online at belialtrap.com. Canada has a long tradition of producing the finest fur in the world. At Belial Traps, we have been a proud supporter of this reputation for over 20 years. Our patented designs and proven reliability have set the gold standard in professional grade traps. We are proud of our contributions to the advancement of trapping. Our belief in uncompromising quality means that every Belial Trap is 100% Canadian made by us for unbeaten performance. Belial Traps, first in the forest. When a lynx, a lot of times guys will set their lynx cubbies or their lynx snares fairly low to the ground, right? But when you look at a lynx, like look at him standing up, right? A lynx is pretty much all legs. Like his legs are getting pretty stiff here, but you see where his head is. Like his le head is 18 inches off the ground. To center of foot, nose probably, yeah. Right? When a lynx is coming up here, um, they're not walking down all crouched down. They're kind of walking up, they're looking in that cubby, especially because of where I put that bait stick. That's where his attention is being focused, right? Um, by keeping that bait stick right dead center in the snare, that's what he's focused on. He's looking straight on at that 
there and I want his legs to be long. I don't want him to have to crouch down and try to go like this into the cubby. That's when you're gonna catch legs, but keeping that snare a little bit higher, right? His legs have lots of room to work underneath that snare, so you don't have to worry about him catching because he's not like a dog, a coyote where they walk like this, a lynx, they really place their feet. So you wanna make sure you give them lots of room for those feet to work. That's why that snare is probably 14 to 16 inches off the ground. Right, you can see like this one here, it's a little bit bumped out of the way, but we had um, we had two on this one, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, like you can see, there's it's a good uh, 14, anyways. Yeah. Right. So, and that's just to give him lots of room for those feet to work. And once again, it, it, it you you've got that V underneath it there yeah. to show, for him to step forward because a cat steps forward, you know, very deliberately, right? Yes, exactly. And you can see this snare. That lynx hardly even kinked that cable. It doesn't take very much to kink this cable. No. And that snare is hardly disturbed at all. So, so and lynx uh, are animals that were, are so good in a snare because their carotids are, are so exposed. Yeah. And that you, it just doesn't take much. Exactly. And you can see right where that snare mark was right there. That's yeah. where that line was. That's perfect. That's real high up on the neck. I doubt that lynx was alive in that snare more than a, a minute at the absolute most. Yeah. Beautiful cat. Perfect. Got some good news here. There we go. A lynx. You can see pulled the pole out. And it was sometime today they that he got onto her. I'll have to reset it, reset up the, the cubby here. Something else. Nice catch around the neck. And you can see that we've got a little bit of work to do here. I'll get at her. All right, reset. You can see the stick back in there and it's got the lure on it. I'll just take and get some cat here around here. I like to use a little bit of lynx urine. Just get her shot back there. And she's all ready to go again. All ready to go. All right. Well, AJ, that was a very busy couple days. We got in, I think in my head, 50 of them? Somewhere around that, yeah. A lot of work, but man, it already shows how quickly it works. I mean, oh yeah, a couple in a couple days, and we already got production. So all it takes is for a cat to go by, and the first cat that did, we got. Oh yeah. I want to thank you very much for all of your uh, sharing, all your, your your tips, your techniques, your all your knowledge. Yep, my pleasure. Uh, a lot of people look at you and think you're young, <laughs> and then and not know what you're talking about. You're ex excellent trapper, and I've learned a lot. Oh. That's no problem. <laughs> I'm sure the, I'm sure the viewers have too and, and we hope we see you next week here on Trapping Inc. Trapping Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. Online at ArgoUTV.com. Belial Traps, first in the forest. Find us online at BelialTrap.com. And by Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine. Alberta's only hunting, fishing, and trapping magazine. You can keep up with all the action online at trappinginc.com or join our Facebook and YouTube sites.